Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing and today is a Stashing with Stephanie day. That's where we come out with a brand new Fat Quarter friendly pattern that's inspired by this month's Fat Quarter bundle that we sent out to our subscribers. And this month we have a really very pretty collection. It's very feminine in its colors and then also its designs. Very whimsical. I think you're really gonna like it. It's called Homeward by Monica Forsberg and she is part of the Anna Maria Corner Conservatory Group from Free Spirit. And so that's a collection of sort of like-minded designers that Anna Maria has uh, brought together. So if you like her, you're probably gonna like a lot of these designers as well. So we're gonna take a look at the fabric first, but while we take a look at it, we're also gonna talk a little bit about the club. So here is one of the big prints. Um, there's a collection of very large prints and ones that can work a little bit smaller. And so the pattern this month really is gonna make use of that and we'll see how that works in just a little bit. Um, but it's things that remind you of home, except there's some peacocks. And I don't know who has peacocks in their backyard, but they're really pretty, so that'll be fun. She's from England, so maybe peacocks are more prevalent over there. All right, so we have these beautiful flowers that are trellising up. And then we have the peacocks and they're really big and we're gonna be able to use these and see a good chunk of the peacock. So that's gonna be fun. And there are so many butterflies out. We have been collecting butterfly fabrics uh, for a long time. And my daughter wants, is, is obsessed with them. So I've been collecting all of our butterfly prints that we have to go in a quilt for her someday. And they're more prevalent than you think. We got some more viney flowers, and we'll see this again in another colorway. All right, now we've got a little country manor with some trees and foliage and birds singing and a little fox going around as well. Here's one of those smaller scale ones. It's just a lot of hearts and flowers because the home is where the heart is, right? Back to the peacocks. These are just so fun, and just wait till you see them in the quilt. More butterflies, but bigger this time. And I just love this really rich yellow. It really makes a lot of the other colors pop, especially the blues. So this one is called Good Point. So you could think of it as a bunch of houses in a neighborhood, but you also could think of it as crayons if you wanted to use it for a kid's quilt. We're in a second colorway of the flowers. I love the little details where the flowers there look like little quilt pieces as they're very geometric. And then we've got a bunch of uh, triangles coming up. It's really a well thought out design. Now we have our second colorway of our vining flowers. Second colorway, this one's very pink of our hearts. Second colorway of that good point, the one that could be crayons or also little buildings all over in the neighborhood. And this is a second colorway of the one with the country manor, but they also changed the scale to make it a lot smaller. It's more medium sized now. So instead of having the big country manor, we now have smaller country manors. And it's a little bit more peachier pink color with some blue. They really have got a lot of contrast in the fabrics in this collection. So if you join Stashin with Stephanie, we send you a fat quarter bundle for $29.99 each month. It contains 10 fat quarters, and then you get a pattern like the one that we're doing today for free. You get access to all of our other Stashing with Stephanie patterns. You get special discounts on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, which is filled with fat quarter patterns. And you also get first dibs on this fabric. And we do sell out pretty frequently. Uh, it's, it's crazy how much you guys have loved this and how this club has grown. And as it grows, more people want to get what we call a finishing kit, which includes a couple of fat quarters and background fabric. So that way they can finish their design and, and turn their bundle into a full quilt. They get dibs on that first and then the rest of you get a chance at getting this fabric. Now if you do sign up this month, this is not the fabric you're going to get. We've already shipped that out. If you sign up by the end of this month, it's April now, so by the end of April, then your bundle will come. It'll ship around the 20th of May. If you see this at the beginning of May and sign up, then your first bundle isn't going to come until June. People miss that all the time. It's a big point of confusion. We send you a bunch of emails about the shipping schedule when you sign up, uh, but people miss it. So I just want to make that super clear. So if you want this fabric, get the kit for it. If you're not a member, you're going to want to grab that. And I'm, we're going to call it all the pretties because this is a really good one to show off all those pretty fabrics that you just don't want to cut up small. So check that out. There's a kit, there's patterns. And so you can use this with your stash or you can get homeward. All right, let's get to the tutorial. All right, so to make this quilt we're going to start with a bunch of very long 
strips of fabric. And the pattern instructions will tell you how to cut it, but essentially we're gonna cut our widest and our smallest from the same fat quarter, and then our two medium sizes from the same fat quarter. So when you're choosing which ones are gonna go in your large one, you wanna get your big prints. So I've got my peacock in here, and then this was that large scale country manor. And so there'll be another one of these that's bigger, and there'll be another one of these that's smaller. But this is gonna really allow you to show off this is big peacock and allow it to be a nice big piece that we're gonna be able to cut up. And then the ones that work at more smaller scale, those work for the more medium prints. They kind of provide um, the eye a place to rest so that way we can focus on the peacock. But what I like to do when I'm doing this is lay out all of these and figure out where all my strip sets are gonna be because you're always gonna have a large, your smallest, and then two different medium sizes. And so that way you can kind of pair before you get going which ones you wanna to put together and then you know that you're gonna like the color combinations throughout the entire quilt. Because like this one has a bunch of different colorways within it. It's not just one big one. There are several that coordinate together. So you wanna make sure that like this one, we have the same blue here, here, here and here. So it's gonna tie really nicely throughout the entire section of the unit. All right, so we're gonna strip piece these together. And the other thing you wanna pay attention to the direction, it's hard to tell because it's a white table, but we have a white strip here as well, is a lot of this fabric in this collection is directional. And sometimes that scares people because you're thinking, I'm gonna get a peacock upside down. But it just means that you need to take a little bit extra care at this step when you're starting to sew things together so that everything is pointing in the right direction when you're all done. So for example, here, the instructions are going to tell you to sew your background strip to the bottom of all of your fat quarter strips. So you just wanna make sure that everything is pointing up so that you are truly sewing this to the bottom. So here we have peacocks going up, we have birds and manor houses going up, we've got uh, flowers growing up on a trellis or something, and then we have the houses that are pointing up. These could point down too, but I wanna have them point up so that they look like little houses, because it's called homeward so that'll be fun all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew these all the background strips to my fat quarter strip using a quarter inch seam and then we're gonna press those open so whenever I'm sewing these I'm using a solid strip for this one but you want to make sure you've got right sides together and then I'm meeting up those selvage edges because we're gonna trim all those off and this will make sure that we have the least amount of waste and we'll have the most amount of fabric to play with when we do our next step now, all I'm doing here is I'm lining up the edge of my presser foot with the edge of that fabric. And I don't pin this, there's really no need to. You just wanna kind of line it up. And what I do is I just set my finger on top and let the fabric, the feed dogs, just pull that fabric along. And then when you get so far where you can't pull it up anymore, just readjust and start going again. So if you come to the end like I am and notice that your one strip is longer than the other, no big deal, that happens all the time even when the fabric is from the same manufacturer like this is. What I like to do when you can't hold on here anymore is just move my finger to the side and then I can maintain that accurate quarter inch stitch all the way down because you don't wanna have it be perfect all the way and then just have it go to the side because you don't have control anymore. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna chain piece the rest of these and I'm gonna do one entire unit at a time. So when you chain piece, you're just gonna lift up your presser foot and slide the next strip underneath and then just start sewing and the feed dogs will take it. And you just wanna make sure that you have a little bit of a gap between when your last strip ends and when your next one starts. That way you can trim those threads and get your pieces apart. All right, I'm just gonna keep strip piecing, get all these done and then we're gonna be ready to press. All right, so I always like to press my seams open. It really gives you a lot of possibilities when you go to quilt this, and also it makes for super flat seams. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lay that with the wrong side up, and what I do is I just take my fingers and open that seam up. Then you're gonna take your iron, and you're just gonna put the tip of it right down the center of that seam, and then I keep a few fingers ahead of the iron, and that kind of pre-presses it and gets it nice and open. And that way you're able to get a nice flat press all the way down. 
Now you can see here I've gotten a nice straight line all the way down. If you see a wiggle in there anywhere, it means you pressed a pleat in and you do not have a straight seam. So you want to fix that. Um, otherwise your pieces won't be the size they're supposed to be. And that can be a difference depending on how big your pieces are and like if you have half square triangles and things like that. All right, so now what I like to do is also press it from the right side and I just go straight down that seam. All right, I'm going to repeat this process for my other strip piece units for this particular section. All right, so now we've got our uh, background strip sewn to our fat quarter strip, and that's on the bottom of every single one. That's going to be the case for every one of the units that you are putting together. So now we're going to turn this into sets of two, and then we're going to join it, and we've got our unit all together. So to do that, you're just going to flip things right sides together. And this is also a good, you know, little PSA here. This is a good time to spot check, compare to your pattern, make sure you've got everything in the right order, and also that everything is pointing up if you're using directional fabric so like the strips are going to be on the bottom so your peacocks need to be pointing up or whatever it is that's on your directional fabric if you have it. I'm looking good here so I can go ahead and flip these guys right sides together still keeping my salvages together there because that is going to help me uh, waste less fabric when it comes time to cut apart this strip piece unit. All right so we're just going to do the same process we're going to sew these guys um, with that quarter inch seam all the way down and then when I'm done with that I'm going to join my now two parts instead of four into one and so we're just going to keep going and pressing and it's no different than anything we just did so we're going to do that in kind of a fast way. All right, guys, I've got everything all sewn together. Now's another good time for a quality check to make sure that everything is pointing up. And so we've got our strip piece on the bottom, then pointing up, strip piece up, strip piece up, strip piece up. So we're looking good here. Everything's going the direction it's supposed to. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this apart. And your pattern instructions is going to tell you exactly what you need to cut this apart by. We're gonna cut across the strip piece unit into different sizes, and those are available in the pattern. And what we're going to do is we're going to change up the order of those depending on what's going on in our fabric. So we're gonna have a large and we're gonna have a medium and we're gonna have small strip sets to cut from this. And we're gonna determine where those are going to be based on where our pretties are. So in this case, I don't really care so much what's happening here because we're gonna be able to really focus in on this print when it's in the big one. Um, these can be cut in any place and they'll look great. But for the peacocks, like I really want this peacock to show off and this peacock to show off. So I'm gonna do my best to try to get it so that we are seeing our peacocks right in the center of the strips or as close to center as we can get. And that way we can really show this fabric off without having to fussy cut everything and really get a fast quilt that really shows off all of our pretty fabrics, all the pretties. All right, so I'm gonna grab my cutting mat and then we're gonna get started. So when we construct this, there's going to be three different types of units that we're going to create. And they're going to have different orders of where your big piece, your small piece, and your two medium pieces are. So make sure you're paying attention to your cut or your pattern instructions for that. It's not hard, you just gotta look and follow the instructions. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut these apart and there are different size quantities that we need. And again, that's all super clearly written out in the pattern, but you gotta pay attention. So for this particular one, I need two small pieces, one medium and one large. So what I want is I want this peacock and I got it upside down on purpose because I want to be cutting from here. Um, and I want to make sure that I get that nice and in line. I want this to be in my large section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my single or my smaller sections on this side. That way I can kind of get to this point and determine where I want to be. So that way we can get as much peacock in as possible. So essentially you have to cut the strip sets in the different widths, but it really doesn't matter what order you cut them in and you can choose which order based on what's going on in your fabric. So you can center that and make it look as beautiful as possible without fussy cutting the thing. 
So it takes a little pre-planning, but totally worth it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going as far over to the side as I can, um, where I am still gonna be able to get a little bit cut off here. And then I'm lining up inch lines with those seams of our strip set units. So once I've got that pretty well organized, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a trim just so that I've got a nice straight side to work with here. This is going to be longer than your than your ruler, so you are gonna have to cut it into sections. So what I like to do is leave enough on so that way I can get everything nice and lined up. I know I'm gonna be square with the section I already cut. Then I'm still lining up my inch lines with my seam lines so that I know that I'm nice and square. And then I'll cut the rest. All right, so for this first one, since I know I just wanna cut skinny strips, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip everything around and I'm gonna cut my two skinny strips first because I know I'm gonna be nowhere near where this peacock is because I'm maybe gonna to get to about here by the time I get my skinny strips cut, then maybe I can take this one for my medium and this one for my large, but we'll see how that all shakes out. So now that I have a nice straight edge to work with, I'm able to line up my ruler exactly with that edge that we just trimmed. I still have my inch lines lined up with those seams to make sure that I'm square. Once I'm good to go there and I've double checked my measurement on my pattern, I can go ahead and start cutting. All right, we're gonna get that lined up again. Again, all the way to the top and on the sides. And then I can go ahead and trim. So now we've got our first skinny strip. I'm gonna set that to the side and cut one more skinny strip. All right, so now I have decisions to make. I need to decide if I wanna cut my medium strip first and then my large strip. So we're gonna take a look and we're gonna take a measure here. So I know that my two strips together are gonna equal 11 inches. So that is gonna be absolutely perfect because I'm ending up right about here, which means with my quarter inch, I'm gonna be able to see the entire edge of that peacock if I cut my medium strip first. I'm just gonna go ahead and also measure to the width of my medium strip and see where we're gonna end up on this peacock here. And I'm gonna be cutting off her face. So I'm, I'm not happy with that. So since I know that all I have left to cut from this is this 11 inches, I got a lot of wiggle room here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this over a little bit more and I'm gonna measure how far over I need to be to be able to have this peacock nice and centered in my piece. And it looks like if I cut in at about five and a quarter instead of the exact measurement that I need for my medium strip, I'm gonna be able to have this blue peacock nice and centered, and then I still am gonna be able to have this peacock nice and centered. So because I've got a little bit of extra space here, I'm able to maneuver that, so I'm gonna overcut a little bit here for this medium strip. Now you're gonna have to think about that and do your own math, and that might be a little scary, um, because all you have to do is just see, okay, how much do I have left, I would always cut your small strips first, um, unless like this happens to be like right at the edge and you wanna cut that. Um, but you just have to make sure that you've, you've got enough room, you got enough extra, and you'll be good to go. All right, so now that I know that I need to cut this to five and a quarter, so that way I can center this really well, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that from the bottom. All right, so I've got five and a quarter lined up all the way along here, and then I have still have my inch lines lined up with those strips. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a trim. See, I've got everything lined up down here and here and here. And now we're gonna see that peacock and we're not gonna cut her off. So she's gonna look fabulous. So I totally wanna show you all that I make mistakes too. So I thought I was cutting at five and a quarter, but I was really cutting at four and three quarter. But we're gonna be okay, cause we're still gonna see our peacock um, and we'll still see her down here. We just are gonna cut off a little bit of her tummy. It'll be okay. But uh, if you like measure out perfectly and you think this looks awesome and then you realize, whoops, I screwed that up a little bit. Don't worry, I do it too. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to cut this to the actual size that I need. So I'm gonna take the side that I just cut and now I can see my peacock, so I'm gonna know if I am off or not. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to the actual size of that medium strip. 
All right, so now we've got our medium strip cut down. It's not exactly as I wanted it. It would have been nice if we would have had another extra half inch to the side of that beak, because then I would have been able to see the whole peacock breast, and then we would have been nice and centered. But hey, we're still gonna get a good look at that peacock and no fussy cutting was required. So now I'm gonna get ready to cut the large piece. All right, so I'm now measuring over from the edge over, and this is actually really good placement. So we're gonna end up right about here. This peacock is gonna end up really nice and center, so it's gonna look beautiful. And then we've got some extra stuff here that we can use maybe on the quilt back if we want uh, to create a nice little center panel, but we're good to go to cut at exactly that large measurement. But again, if I needed a little more space, I got a little extra here, so I could always adjust that a little bit and make it work. So the measurement I need to cut to is longer or wider than my six and a half by 24 inch ruler. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna cut using my square. Now my 12 and a half inch square would be the ideal one for this, but who the heck knows where that is right now? I'm sure y'all can relate. So I'm just gonna work my way up uh, small little bits at a time. All right, so here we have it. We have our two small, our medium, and our large piece that we need for unit A. It's all cut out. We were able to really make use of that fabric that is too pretty to cut up by getting our, uh, in this case, our peacock's nice and centered, but we didn't have to fussy cut anything. We were able to strip piece everything and then just measure a little bit carefully and plan our cutting mindfully as we were going through it in order to make use so that way we could have our biggest pieces show off as much as possible. We do have a little bit left over, so if you screwed anything up, you would at least be able to get another small piece out of this. But what I think I'm gonna do is maybe use some in the back, depending on how quickly I can get this together for this month's stash and with Stephanie. Now, just a reminder, we are making different arrangements of the of units. There's gonna be unit A, which we did here, and there's a unit B and a unit C. And in each of those, it's the process is the same. We're strip piecing and we're cutting apart. What changes is the order and the placement of our large, small, and medium pieces, and also how many of the small, medium, and large pieces that we need from each one of those to make the final quilt turn out the way it's supposed to. I think it's really fun. I'm really excited about it. And then the other thing to know is we're making two of each of those units. So we're going to make another one that is sized like this. Now I can use the exact same fabric. So I could use like this fox and manor print as my big one and my peacock as my small and flip flop these. Or you can change them up completely and just have a really scrappy looking quilt. And I think that's what I'm going to do here. But it's totally up to you and your comfort level and what you think looks good. Well, thank you so much for following along. Make sure you go download all the pretties so that you can make this pattern too at home and you can use your stash or you can get a kit for this while supplies last over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Just a reminder that if you are joining the Stash with Stephanie Club so you can get bundles for $29.99 a month plus first dibs on fabric like this, free patterns, you would get this one for free and a bunch more and discount codes on the book. But we are, have already shipped this out. So if you are joining right now, you wanna get the full kit for this. That's for new members and people who are not subscribed. The finishing kit is for folks who have already subscribed. The, your first bundle will not come until May if you sign up by the end of this month. If you sign up at the beginning of May, then your next bundle will come in June. So just keep in mind of that. We prep everything and ship it all out at the same time so everyone has the same chance at getting additional fabric because it does sell out. So go check it out, Homeward by Monica Forsberg. Really beautiful fabric and really we really worked, or I really worked to come up with this pattern so we could show off all the big, pretty, too cute to cut up prints and but not have to spend hours and hours planning and fussy cutting. So I really hope you enjoy this one. Go sign up for Stash with Stephanie. Make sure you like and subscribe, all the things. And until next time, happy quilting. I'm wearing four inch heels today. They're not very easy to run a presser foot with. <laughs>